What's up, everybody? This is Shane from Ferocious Fatherhood here doing another 30 for 30 video. My guest today is Deo, all the way from Alaska, man, all the way up yes, in the sir. cold. Uh, this organization, <laughs> Parenthood News and Fatherhood Village. I'm here to, to have them on. We'll get talking about some fatherhood topics and we'll get into it. Deo, welcome to the show, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So y'all, y'all freezing up there yet? Or it's getting there. It's getting yeah. there. It's it's on its way. So October is kind of like the only fall experience we have. September going in October, and and as soon as the first snowfall hit, it's normally middle October, November, and it it doesn't stop until March, sometime <laughs> April. You know. So yeah, we we in it. We're we're in the forties, fifties. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, man. You're gonna get there. I'm sure you're used to it. Like I said, you. Or like you said earlier, you've been up there a couple of years, so I'm sure you all are used to it. Yeah, yeah, it's, we kind of embrace it, you know, mm -hmm. wear it as a a, a, bad, a badge of honor a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, cool, man. Hey, talk us uh, kind of about your organization a little bit, both Parenthood News and then also Fatherhood Village, man. Take it away. All right. Uh, so basically, we started with our idea of. Um, having conversations when, and when I say we I'm speaking of uh my partner my best friend Kev Hick um who we grew up together in high school and this based on our our relationships and the, and the conversations and the dialogue we had and in, in becoming fathers and, and married men um we thought that we wanted to share these conversations and get perspectives from other people as well so we started the the podcast and the podcast was titled the fatherhood village and it kind of spurred us to thinking, okay, how can we kind of develop this and have more of an outreach and, and to have more engagement locally and, and expand possibly beyond that. So we wanted to welcome guests. We wanted to actually uh, go to local events, plug in with different youth programs, um, things on base. Um, I'm military. I mean, you are too. Okay. And so we're just thinking of ways that, that we can evolve this idea and really get after things on a grassroots level. We know how important fatherhood is. And we've seen, um, you know, throughout the course of history, uh, especially being a black man, a lot of fathers weren't in the homes, um, you know, broken homes. And that was to a lot of the black community's detriment. So we know how important it is, especially for uh, black males. And we wanted to be that, that model. We wanted to be that example. And, and bring other people into the fold and learn from them as well. And we don't, we don't have all the answers. We don't know all the, the know-how, but we know the direction that we want to move in. So, um, so like I said, it started with the podcast and then with the parenthood news, I'm always intrigued. I love writing. I'm always intrigued about others, um, different studies, different research done with, with, uh, parents and, and the, the parental guidance how it affects society, um, the psychological matters of it. So I wanted to share what I was reading and, you know, obviously give credit to those that wrote the, the articles and essays, things like that. So that's where the parenthood news started. And, you know, I'm all about sustenance, significance, right? I don't spend a whole lot of time dwelling on the internet if it's not going to provide me something of significance. So I'm like, Hey, let me bring that into practice for myself. Let me kind of, you know, pay it forward and give some other people to, um, the, you know, the benefits of, of reading about, you know, the psychological, um, you know, the levels of parenting and, and, and the child and then the different challenges that we all face. We all go through them one way or another. And that's a, a great way to bring people together is just by commonality. So, that's kind of where we are with it now. And uh, we're on YouTube. I will we'll get to that later, but um, just the outreach. And I really want to get the, the tangible side of it. Like it's one thing to talk about it, but I'm really about action. Mm -hmm. I'm really about doing these things. So we have envisioned setting up events where it's more like a workshop where we'll have, you know, small grouping to see how it goes and see how we can, how well we can organize it. But throughout these three years I've been in Anchorage, Alaska, I've been being more sociable, going to events. Um, my wife, she's helped me kind of plug in with some 
other people of the community, um, whether they be entrepreneurs, um, whether they have, uh, you know, ties with the, the public school system, private school systems, things like that, extracurricular that kids are involved with, and just meeting in a lot of handshake and a lot of, you know, um, beginnings of relationships to one day put it all together and say, hey, let's host this at this location based on the relationship I have with these people and get kids involved. Hey, it'd be a, a, a father son type of event. It'd be a daddy daughter. Um, and obviously not to leave out the mother, a, a mother son type of thing, just kind of mm-hmm. expand things, everyone coming together, talking about things that we're going through, get kids involved and get them added exposure. You know, it, mm-hmm. we're not just, you know, we don't want to leave out anybody. We're not, disassociating with with any you know combination of 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 race any combination of disability Uh um bringing everybody into the fold every walks of life so that's kind of like our end game that's what we want to develop later in in starting with the conversation yeah that's so awesome to hear it sounds like like the things that you want to do i mean that's incredible just getting out in the the community shaking hands that's that's really where it all starts and yeah. then not also not wanting to exclude mothers i mean that's kind of one of the big things that like myself i want to focus on ferocious fatherhood my wife helps me out incredible amounts mm-hmm. um, so we don't want to exclude the mothers at all we actually want to come in and work together with mothers to absolutely to really boost boost the family wow. so that's awesome that you uh that you want to do that being up there in Alaska, are you guys having any, is there a lot of stuff in like the communities for parents or fathers or anything like that? Or, um, so I've, I've been slowly keeping my ear close to those type of things. It's not, at least from my earshot, it's not promoted as well. It's not advertised as much. Um, but I'm trying to penetrate into those certain circles and, you know, uh-huh. help boost that signal. Um, if there are any, I know there's a lot of youth camps, youth programs. I don't know how often they have them. I don't know if it's like like a seasonal thing, but I know with being in Alaska, we have that limited daytime in the winter. So throughout that winter solstice and as it gets toward that time, it's a lot of hours of darkness. There's seasonal depression here. Suicide rates are high. So I think that's when a lot of things should be jumping off between, you know, those winter months from say October onto about April. So that's one thing I I've taken heed of. And if, if I had to give it a start date, it'd be around those times. I think those are most specific Uh um, and how important it is to keep kids involved, keep them engaged all, all uh, ages, right. From newborn all the way to adolescence, um, and it, it can go beyond that. I know sometimes, you know, not to be too long winded, but sometimes we think childhood kind of, or the relationship between mother and father, father and son, father and daughter, it ends at like 18, like that's uh-huh. it's supposed to be over. Right. I, I uh-huh. think it should, it should go beyond that. I mean, you read the hat fatherhood never stops. So I think the, the union and the relationship should only continue to grow beyond the years, the years of 18. So bringing mothers and fathers um, together with their children continuously, right? It should be like uh-huh. on a routine basis just to, and like I said, that's where the, the problem solving, that's where the idea should, should come from. Like, okay, what does this bond look like at this age, at this uh-huh. age of development, right? What should they be trying to do at this stage and make it, you know what I'm saying? More, mm-hmm. um, more sustaining as far as the relationship. Because sometimes mm-hmm. kids like to do their own thing and get as far away from their parents as possible. And I get it. We all been there, right? We want to explore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We want to be liberated and and do mm-hmm. things on our own. But um, so we want to make it fun, engaging, exciting. Um, you know because. I don't want anyone to regret the times that they didn't spend with, with their mother and father, especially if it was there, if it was, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. Make it meaningful, right? That quality time. Cause I lost my mother when I was 20, 26. Oh, wow. Right. 
But because I treated basically every moment um, like it was my last with her, like I, I never took it for granted. Right. Mm-hmm. Up, up until um, the last moment I saw her, like we had a blast. We had fun. She came down to visit me in Texas. It was for her birthday. She came mm-hmm. to visit me for her birthday. Wow. So, you know That's what I mean? Awesome. So yeah. the relationship was, was awesome. Like it, I have no regrets and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so much at peace because of that. And, and I hate to see someone else go through something where they figure they could have did something differently or man, if I had to do it all over, there's not a whole lot of that type of thought process with me. And I want to help people realize that while they have the time with their parents now, um, to do more things and, and, and to make it fun, right? You don't have to just be sitting there doing things you'd rather not do. Like have the, the, uh, the understanding, like, okay, my parents are interested in this. We're interested in that. Let's kind of either mesh the two or, or compromise or do something, but share those things together. Those, those experiences together. Yeah. That's awesome. That you're, that y'all are like really focused on or continue to focus on the, the relationship after you turn 18. Cause that is still such a critical part. I mean, there's still mm-hmm. I'm 32 and I still call my parents up like, Hey, what do I do in this situation? Or, Hey, this happened. How do I handle that? Or yeah. you know, it, it, it's still so important to my kids to be able to get that advice from someone who's gone through it a couple of times. I mean, I got, you know, an older brother. So my parents have done it twice. Mm-hmm. You know, and now I got two kids and handle this with my second kid. And, you know, how, how, how did y'all handle it? It's still so important. So important. it is, it is. So then what's yes, like, kind of like your, your general background, what was your childhood like with your father and your life and how many kids you got, what ages, and like, you already touched on that you're in the military. Uh, but yeah. Like, what do you do for your career and kind of that? Okay. Um, so I have two children. I'll start there. I have a, a son and a daughter. My daughter's my oldest. She's seven and my son, he'll be five next month. And again, they were all born in Texas. Uh, that's where I married my wife. My wife and I are both from Dayton. Um, so that makes things a lot easier, kind of the visit family and, and, and all that. Uh, but yeah, be, in my humble beginnings, right, I, um, my parents split. They were married um, and were going through a divorce. I was super young. I don't remember. I was 18 months when I think the... Uh, the divorce was finalized. So I don't remember them ever sharing a, a house together. Right. Mm-hmm. So growing up, I always kind of fantasized about that. I, I kind of, you know, always thought like, I wonder what life would be if they were together because those are the two people I love the most. Right. And I was the only child. I don't have any siblings. Okay. Um, both my parents remarried, so I have an extension of uh, uh, brothers and sisters um, through that. But I was blessed to have another set of parents. And though I would only see my my biological father every other weekend, my stepfather basically raised me, right, if, if we're talking about um, – the the men are in my life the most not to discredit my father it is what it is but my stepfather was there um so I learned a lot from him primarily and he was pretty strict um he was he was born in in 48 so uh you know the old school style Mm -hmm. of parenting his um you know, how he was raised, it seemed like it was super transparent as far as how he relayed and, and, and impacted me was basically exactly how he was raised. So it didn't take any BS. Um, he expected the most out of me, expected me to be at my best, um, you know, and he didn't, he didn't want me to quit anything I started. That's one of the biggest lessons I took from him, um, you know, thinking about the, the things, thinking back to the things he told me was take care of your body. So your body would take care of you. And I, and I, that's, that's good. I tr- yeah. And I, and I treat that like gospel. Um, mm-hmm. I changed my life um, based on that adage that he spoke to me. And, you know, when we're kids, it doesn't hit like that until we're a little older, like, oh man, it's, 
that's facts. Like that's real. Uh-uh. Um, and, and obviously, and I impart that into my children as well. So a lot of things he chuckles at a lot of things I tell him about how I'm parenting <laughs> and he sees, you know what I'm saying? He sees the parallels. Do, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and again, like, you know, childhood, it's not easy all the time. I, I had my run-ins with him, um, you know, getting older, reaching, uh, you know, the teenage years, you think you've grown, you think you big and bad. Um, but it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. Um, and we were able to, and you know, there was times I'm like, man, I don't like this guy. Like I'm good. Like <laughs> I'm cool on him. But I think that made our relationship so much stronger in the end. Like, um, you know, we've gone through so much together. Um, and then I'm not only thinking about what he was going through at the time as a, of a, you know, young adult child. Uh-huh. As I'm thinking about as an adult, I'm like, man, I can see his side of things now, right? It wasn't, I'm not thinking very selfish about um, the things I did or or how I behaved or my feelings then. I'm like, nah, well, I can see both sides of that, right? Mm -hmm. And and, um, Well, yeah, just to kind of wrap it all up, my my father, he he taught me a lot of things too. They both ran their own businesses. They both were, um, you know, solopreneurs. And actually my dad kind of advanced his uh, human resources uh, business into a, a small group. Um, he was he was successful for a while with that. Oh, good friend. That's so awesome. Just, yeah, appreciate that. So early on, those two men running their own show, I was kind of conditioned to take that on for me. Like, yo, I need to start something that I can run, that I can operate. Because uh-huh. um, I had, you know, some artistic artistic ability. I was pretty creative. Um, went to high school, middle and high school for uh, visual arts. It was a um, a magnet school, so you had to have a uh, basically a talent, right? And okay. kind of basically groom your talent, and hopefully you can start a career based on that talent. They had like creative writing, they had jazz, they had dance, they had visual arts, um, several other things, and then it kind of. Um, that has certain nuances from those big magnets that you would study and that you would uh-huh. uh, perform and, and compete in. But anyway, so I took that, um, honed in on that craft and uh, basically knew like, yo, I want to do something with my art, my, my abilities there. But I don't think I'd have thought highly about that unless I seen, you know, my, my father and my stepfather basically run things from the ground up how they uh-huh. wanted to. Right. Um, nothing against, you know, getting a great job and career and stuff like that. But I think seeing that it can be done another way, like that was uh-huh. very influential for me. So now again, uh, I had a clothing brand uh, that I started a while back. Like I said, I'm doing a podcast thing, um, getting into some other little ventures and that that's invigorating for me. Like I, I enjoy it. Like, and because the air force is kind of like that foundation, I don't, I don't feel bad about failing. Like I have, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Some uh-huh. a safety net, if you will. So I want to get out there as much as I can. So when, you know, that retirement date comes, I kind of already have, you know, a, a pathway forward, but, but yeah, to answer your question, man, it, uh, they both taught me a lot and I'm very fortunate, very grateful. And I think I kind of got a leg up because I have two different styles to kind of, you know, bump together uh-huh. and see, okay, what's most effective not only for me, but for my child. Cause sometimes we get lost in, well, that's the way I was taught. Well, that's the way we did it. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to be that way. Right. So becoming more open and more, um, having that hu- humility, if you will, to understand, okay, I need to adjust in certain ways and not be so rigid and be so stern on one path. There's, there's more than one route to get there. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome that you're taking on so much, especially like you said, now you have a safety net with the military. That was kind of like our thought thought process too. Like, Hey, we, we have at least two more years. Let's, you know, work as hard as we can these next two years on ferocious fatherhood. Let's get this up and going. Let's see what happens in two years, whether we we, we might not have to reenlist type of deal or, you know, reenlist and, or have the, the, the option that having that choice. is so (laughs) like, man, You don't get to make there's, there's power and options. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love, 
love that thought process. So what were some, uh, what were some like major lessons that you learned from, the, so you talked about like not, not quitting and continuing doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial side of, that you saw from both your, your parents, but were there any other major lessons that you learned from both your dad and your stepdad? Um, one, one glaring thing that, that stands out was dealing with my father and to kind of set this all up. He used to always say the one thing I always remember him saying, um, assuming to get you killed. Don't assume <laughs> anything. Right. Um, yeah. so he obviously with the business, um, he started Holloway, uh, one, one of say it was a highway recruiting services. Um, it might've been another name, but anyway, long story short, he, he hired, um, a partner and who became basically the vice president and their relationship was going well. He was checking books. Everybody was checking was holding each other accountable, fact checking all the numbers. Um, business was rolling well, but my stepfather knew this guy that my dad partnered with and hired as a vice president for his company and told him, Hey, watch this guy. Like he's he's been known to do this, he's conniving, he's deceitful. Um, based on other business ventures he's been on, I really watched this guy. Like, so my dad, based on the the relationship, the friendship that he built, he felt that friendship could trump business, mm -hmm. right? So he felt that hey, we're good. I'm not worried about it. Like, I know he's going to do what he need to do, and like he he had checked him up to a certain point. And then he kind of just let his hands off the wheel a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and long story short, this guy stole money from the company, um, oh, you know, uh, you know, writing checks to himself and just playing with the figures and stuff like that. And it went on for a while. And then my dad kind of found out too late, asking questions, weren't getting the answers he needed. So uh, he had to end up filing for bankruptcy took this guy to court and all that stuff, but, and he had to basically dissolve the company. My dad was living a, a pretty good lifestyle. Um, uh -huh. You know, as, as a single child, like I, it wasn't a whole lot I didn't get. Um, and I kind of was a brat because of that, but uh, that's another story. I grew out of that. Um, but so to see my father go from a certain lifestyle, a certain affluency, to the transition into starting over and, you know, going through that whole process was very humbling for him. And he always told me, do not associate business with, with pleasure, you know, keep things separate, right? Write contracts down, have agreements. Like he was, and I, and I seen, I seen it all happen. I was young, but I understood that things were not right. Things were not going well. Lifestyle changed. Um, we weren't going out to eat like that. And um, I don't know if you can still see me, but yeah, things, things drastically changed. And I knew he meant what he said. He lived it. He experienced it. So as far as life lesson, like I, I cherish that. I keep that close. I keep that dear. And I approach a lot of things like that. I try not to be caught slipping if, if, you know, if I had to sum it up because it can really, um, you still, you there? I don't know what the heck just happened, uh, man. <laughs> okay. Lost the signal. Yeah, uh, I guess all of a sudden it dropped. My phone dropped. Everything just dropped. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. Guess it's I don't know if it was, yeah, I don't know if it's still recorded what I was saying. I said a little bit more. Um, but yeah, just overall, again, I, I took that very serious 
because I understood that he lived that. He went through that. Mm-hmm. He experienced that. He's not just blowing smoke. And I seen how um, his life had changed, right? His whole life trajectory had had been altered, right? And I seen him have to kind of rebuild and restructure things. We weren't going on the vacations we used to, you know, go on. I wasn't getting all the elaborate, expensive items that I, you know, yearned for, the fancy restaurants, things like that. Those were X'd out, like, you know, we, we started from the, you know, basically a bottom again. And luckily he had already uh-huh. purchased his home and, um, you know, kind of borrowing from the equity of the home and stuff like that to patch things up. But, uh, yeah, so it's it can derail your entire future. Um, mm. So just taking in that into account, like have the things in writing. Like if you if you and this other person have mutual respect and you revere each other and you understand how business works and how friendship should not be intertwined with that, um, and you know where that line is, mm-hmm. you all should. It shouldn't be any problem about signing paperwork. Right. Uh-huh. We know what it is. We we seen how things work with, without it being there. So that's that was the thing that kind of leveled me up when it come to thinking about business and having a business acting. Yeah, man, that man, that's such a like a heartbreaking story. You know, you work so hard and then someone can just take it just like that. Man, right. that's, that's a huge one. I'm definitely have to tuck that away. That they're never assuming. Yeah, man. Yeah. So then what? how do you incorporate that into like your fathering style? How do you pass that on to your children? Hopefully not in the same way that it got passed to you. I mean, I hope, you know, you, you're not, you're not losing your whole business. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so passing it on, basically just sharing that same story mm-hmm. and trying to apply it to things that are more relevant to them. So it can stick a little better. Mm-hmm. And hopefully I don't have to speak from an ill experience uh, to double down on that. Hopefully we, you know, the family has one uh, form of reference to mm-hmm. to use and, you know, we kind of steer clear from that. But yeah, but just trusting that if they're going to, into business, um, that they, they have to know the ins and outs, um, be well versed, understand how the business is supposed to operate. Don't feel discouraged or feel like you're being condescending by by checking behind people's work. It, it can be random, right? It can just be like uh-huh. a little courtesy check. Um, you know, so just and just having them maybe watch, you know, some Netflix stories, some documentaries, and just seeing how malicious people can be. Um uh-huh. not for them to kind of turn cynical, but just understanding, okay, if I don't, you know, make these uh, you know, check these boxes if I allow the friendship to cloud my judgment when it comes to business, it could come back to bite me. So I, I'd mm-hmm. rather you, I'd rather either lose a friendship um, than to lose, you know, my future uh-huh. in, in a sense. And I, and I, and again, I feel like if there's a strong connection between you and this other person you're doing business with, they should, they understand if they don't, then they need uh-huh. to do some homework. Sign your name, understand the agreement, boom, tuck it away. We don't have to talk about uh-huh. it. Again. Hopefully, you know, so, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, that was also something that I learned in the military is that, mm-hmm. like, if, if I'm in charge of this shop, this is my shop, everything that happens here is my, it's my business. You and I can be friends. I still got to check every now and then, or, you know, I got to get you up to speed because if, if you're just pencil whipping something, saying, yep, I did this, and you're not, Can't I mean, had it. I mean, especially, you know, crew chief world, I mean, man, lives I, I on know. the line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I remember mm. back in, I don't remember what year, but in Baltimore, Maryland, there was a, they had a stealth plane at one of the, the guard bases and somebody just pencil whipped that they did some maintenance and they didn't really do it. And the wing fell off and the plane landed right in the house. Luckily, nobody was in the house. They were all on vacation, but oh. yeah, man, they came back and it, it came down to like, two little things like did you tighten this bolt or you know something like that and it was uh the whole wing fell off and yeah man so wow yeah yes I, it God. is definitely one of the things that i've it, it can be uncomfortable you know yeah. being like hey is especially with your friends like hey I, I need to see that this got done you know i yeah. need to see because there are lives and it, on the line. yeah You're explain it right. to, yeah 
explain to him like, hey, you know, this this isn't easy for me either. Um, you know, you my guy, like we're good. But aside from that, uh, we'll get back to that. Mm-hmm. But for the sake of business and, and making sure, like I said, these things are, are staying current, these things are staying, um, you know, for the sake of safety, you know, and the fluidity of the business and things like that, like for this to sustain, like we, this is a base we got to cover, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, again, I think it, it's a testament to the, to the friendship as well. Like, yo, is it a finicky friendship now? Like, okay, you putting that in front of it's separate yeah, right. like this is nothing yeah. to do with that like we gonna go drink or we gonna hang out right after this but we gotta yeah. make sure this is tight first like yeah yeah like, like this is this right here is the standard and just because it, we're boys i it's still the standard i'm gonna check yeah, yeah. the exact same way i'm gonna check bob over there and me and bob we mm-hmm. ain't boys like him and i do not like each other but i'm gonna check y'all as the exact same way absolutely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you can also kind of take that kind of into marriage and you know kids i mean like hey you know, this is the standard, like, oh, obviously I trust my wife, but hey, like we, we check each other with finances every now and then like, hey, am I, am I paying all the bills right? Is she paying all the bills right? Like we, yeah. we check each other. And I think that, right. that could be a really good, uh, a really good thing. And then you also, you know, checking your kids, making sure they're doing the things they're supposed to be doing. And, yeah. You know, setting, setting the standard, right. And, mm-hmm, and absolutely. really forming, forming a culture. And again, I, I brought up humility, having the um uh, the intellectual humility to be accountable on your side of things too and and giving your children the chance to say hey dad um i i seen that you didn't finish this um is everything okay you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like and and being very approachable with that and having your kids have the same respect or you having the same respect for your children as well and saying Instead of like harping and yelling at them like the, the first go around, mm-hmm. maybe be a little bit more light with it. Cause you, uh, we all know you'd be yelling all day if, if that was the first, you know, angle of yep. attack. Um, so, and it, it's been times where, you know, even before we got on, um, my daughter said, Hey, dad, uh, like this part for table etiquette and stuff like that. She was like, Hey, you, you chomp real loud when you chew. I'm like, Oh, I do. She's like, yeah. I'm like, so I can hear you way over here. I'm like, okay, all right. Let me <laughs> let me work on that a little bit, right? So giving them the the freedom to, you know, not so much nitpick, but like, hey, based on how you handle criticism, is going to be mm-hmm. a direct reflection of how they feel the standard is, and and understanding like, hey, all right, maybe I shouldn't be so you know uh, offended or come to my own defense and say, oh, okay, let me. Let me watch that. Let me pay t- more attention mm-hmm. to that. Okay, I, I got you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I was telling my wife uh, a while ago. I'm actually one that while I think it was a couple weeks ago. We were talking about pretty much the hierarchy system in a family. And I said, sometimes it may be a good idea to maybe level the hierarchy a little bit and just have a universal um level of respect for everyone uh-huh. right i don't think any one person should have more respect or be revered more than anybody else i think a lot of attention uh a lot of the um patience we give should be with everyone especially for our children uh-huh. so um not necessarily giving them more power but just really understanding roles within the family uh-huh. right i don't i'll just kind of telling her that hey just because an elder is speaking, yes, we give them the the all due respect and, and we, we're attentive. We conduct ourselves well. Um we we speak, you know, speak with 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 dignity and we we speak um uh with a sense of understanding. That should also be applied to the children, right? It shouldn't be one way based on hey, they're younger, they don't know anything, they ain't speaking. nah give them that same space, give them that same attention, right? Still be attentive, still be open mm-hmm. to that, right? And because they're going to grow up thinking, okay, that's how I treat younger folks or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. it's perpetual based on wh- however you go with it, so. Mm-hmm. It was always, it's always amazing to me that the more I allow my son to get involved in stuff, the, mm-hmm. the more pride he has in that stuff. 
I mean, the more, yeah. the more I let him, you know, clean his room and he cleans, I, we set the standard. Hey, you know, you, I'll let you set the standard. And he says, Hey, I, I want to put this here. I want to put that there. And it's nowhere yes. near what, what necessarily I want, but if he's setting a standard and he's doing it, man, I, I don't come in behind him. I don't do nothing like that. Like, Hey, you did what, you, what you're going to do. That's awesome, man. Like you, That's big. you crushed it. Yeah. 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 It's freaking awesome. Yes, sir. Learned, like I've learned. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just saying, just give them empowering them and giving mm -hmm. them. That's how they really learn responsibility when they know, well, okay, this is like you said, like this is that way I want it to be structured. I like it this way. Okay, that's you saying it, it ain't mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So hold yourself to those, you know, what I'm saying those rules and standards. So now nah, that's excellent. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. And you, we kind of use that across the board. Like there's also. You know, my wife is, I mean, I, I love her and that, like, there's just some things I would do differently, but it's like, hey, if, if that's how you're doing it, I'm not coming behind you and nitpicking on these things. If it's this little Cause stuff. Because you, you want, you want that same freedom too. So you're like, you know exactly. what? Let me do my yep. man cave the way I'm going to do it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I don't want to get yelled at if I put my books this way or if I put them over there, or, you know. <laughs> right, that right. Grace. Let's, I mean, we, we really just focus on like the big things like our like like finances are big like her and i will get on yeah. the same page finance financially mm -hmm. um we'll get mm -hmm. on the same page spiritually we're both christians we both you know want to go to church you know things like that and then we you know you know two or three other big things and then all the all that little stuff man it's got to go yeah because like well yeah i mean i i don't know if y'all notice it but what we notice is we start like nitpicking over these little things like hey i, I want this here and not here well then i mean you just create an argument unnecessarily what's the yeah. point of that that's that's another thing um and i had to watch myself um being more emotional intelligent being more self-aware i used to come in the house and because like i got a little bit of ocd and i like things structured a certain way and why wasn't that there the same way i left it things like that i've learned to reserve or to to be silent or be quiet and what I noticed and what I observed that may be off to me and ask, how is your day, babe? How things go today? How are the kids? Cause a lot of times she, she's at home and she was going to full-time, but she was kind of in and out of school and now she's full-time school, but she was in and out from working and then having kids and then thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Things would change. So me being aware of, more aware of what she may be going through or having like you said that grace that you may not even know everything that just happened in this house but if i'm over here babe why ain't this cleaned up who yeah. spilled the why is that on the that ain't how you come in the house no <laughs> it's not <laughs> no so way. i learned that the hard way right um yeah man and i'm i'm putting fuel on the fire because she's already trying to emotionally get through this there's things that she knows she needs to get after. Maybe she was in the middle of taking a break after a whole lot. She'd already did it. I ain't even see yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So going in and, and to your point, if you see it's out of place, go ahead and fix it. Correct. Yeah. It. Right. It's it's, don't even have a conversation about it or let her get to telling you about it. Right. I feel like if it's, if it was big to her um, and you know, it's normally in, in good condition or things are normally, you know, put in their place then you know some things just kind of got out of hand for that day, right? Help mm -hmm. out. Like, don't even say you did it. Just do it, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah. it, it helps out a lot. Like I said, just trying to maintain the the um, the strength of the marriage. Those things are key, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, just having that humility, having that maturity. Yeah, man. So uh, I, I learned those lessons the exact same way, man. Like, you know, you walk mm -hmm. in the door like, man, I've been working all day you know, what? Well, how, how come this isn't done? And my wife actually brought the point like, hey, you know, you go to work and then I work. Like I'm working right here. And she brought this up when my, my son was young. And she's like, my job is to keep our son alive. Outside of that, I'm not focusing on too much else. Like I'm mm. the other stuff. It's all little. It's all got to go. And that was a big right. eye opener. Like, oh yeah, you're right. You yes, are sir. home all day. You are raising a kid that does app note two weeks old knows freaking nothing nothing yeah. and you're you're there raising that kid i i have to show you i have to show that grace yeah yeah it like i said it's, it's an eye opener and i know mm -hmm. i feel real 
I felt terrible. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. dang, like she just dropped some some game on me. I'm like, man, I ain't really all right. You know, and it's not like again that those things are trivial outside of taking care of your child, fed, bathed, healthy, the whole nine. Everything else we'll get to when we get to it. Like, I mean, yeah, exactly. Are we losing money or because our health isn't like mm-hmm. in tip top shape or, you know, what I'm saying outside of things being, you know, a huge safety hazard, which, you know, just get on top of or whatever, like it's, it's inconsequential and they don't, and like they come to work and say, why isn't that done? Why yeah. y'all ain't get them <laughs> aircraft <laughs> off the ground? Yeah. Like they don't come in your job doing that. So yeah. 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 That's exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good impression i love that a lot <laughs> yes sir man so actually i i think we're going to kind of end it on that one man but I, before we go i want to hear do you have any last piece of advice for fathers anything that maybe we you know skimmed earlier that you want to go a little bit deeper man um just just reminding fathers and parents in general it's not easy it's not ever going to be easy there's not an easy button to it right Mm-hmm. And I think the more that we understand each other and the more the more we equip ourselves to become more uh, to become better parents, the better off our children will be. Mm-hmm. And to embrace, like we say in the military, embrace the suck. Mm-hmm. Things are going to get messy. Things will be left astray at times things are going to be perfect we're not searching for perfection that shouldn't be your goal at all Mm -hmm. think about your child's future think on those terms right teaching them the values and beliefs and and things within the culture of how you're trying to raise this child don't get so lost in the 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 minutia of the day understand that hey it was our decision to have this child right they didn't come out of nowhere right Mm -hmm. it's a process so understand being a parent is also a process you're growing together things are happening you know in in sync with each other so the more that you have grace again with yourself the more you become more aware of hey just because I was raised this way doesn't mean it's always right to raise my child. My child isn't me. Uh-huh. Right? This is somebody else. Yeah, we have some similar attributes, similar characteristics. This is not a carbon copy in me. So knowing, mm-hmm. okay, I have to challenge myself to meet how my child needs to be met as far as, you know, these things that are required to raise a healthy, strong, productive individual. So, um, Knowing that it's going to be a challenge, people try to find an easy route. You you can be efficient in certain ways, but that's not going to be with everything, right? Uh Um, So just in a nutshell, embrace the opportunity that you have as a parent. Nobody, you're not going to be looked up to in any other spot in this world as you are going to be a father right Mm -hmm. you have so much power in your words and your actions and what you're doing i think sometimes that you know people don't make that connection so really empower yourself to make these changes we're we're capable we're more than capable take your time a lot of parents are going through the same thing. Share some of these things that you're going through mm-hmm. with some other parents, right? They may have some tips, some some little hacks for you, mm-hmm. right? Try not to go at this alone, right? It's a little more soothing to know like, oh, man, you went through that? Oh, well, how'd y'all? You yeah. Die. Okay, right? Light bulbs go off. Mm-hmm. Or I come with an idea or something together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So just understanding. And and one last thing. Mm -hmm. I know I went I went in a tangent, but my mom, she told me when I used to always try to give her credit, somebody would always try to give her credit um, for how I was raised and how I turned out. She didn't take that. She said it takes a village. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So and at the time, I'm like, nah, mama, you did out there. You was, did it, yeah. He was like, uh-uh, it took more than just me. Like, it wasn't just <laughs> me. Mm -mm, I'm not taking that. Right. Yep. So that that again, how things speak to us later in life, like, whoa, no, it does. It's going to take more than just me. It's going to take more mm -hmm. than just the mother, especially being in the military. Right. When we're constantly away, we're deployed, TDYs, long hours at work, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. Meet other people, um, you know, develop a bond with others. Keep your family tied and challenge your family to continue to support, especially when we're away from the nucleus of, you know, uh, our families and stuff like that mm -hmm. takes a village. It really does. Dale, thanks for being on brother. I love it. I always love talking to another military member. We, we think alike in right. certain things and uh, this is I fun. absolutely love it, man. Cool. Yes, so sir. Hey, take, take a moment, tell people how to get a hold of you, parenthood news, fatherhood village, man. Yeah. So we're on Instagram. Uh, just search parenthood news. Uh, same with the fatherhood village the fatherhood village on instagram we're on twitter a lot of the the search engines are pretty good on these um on these apps just type it in and even though it may not be the handle will still pop up um and we're forming a website for the fatherhood village right now we're i think we just published something uh um another site where we're selling our merch this is actually one of the Search we're selling right now. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. A father's every decision should be based on the betterment of his family. This is just one of a whole lot. Yeah, that's so sweet. if you go to the parenthood village dot store, we have these and a whole lot of like mother stuff on there, kid stuff on there. This hat will probably be on there soon. Um, but if not, it's on the fatherhood village store. Uh, so just look us up. I got a, a link tree handle that has all of these things. We're on Facebook. Um, we're on YouTube. Again, we're just trying to reach everybody where they are. Yeah, that's awesome. Obviously promote, you know, our messages and, and the things that we talk about and, and go from there. That's awesome, Dale. Hey, brother. Thanks for being on, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate like you no having me, man. man. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right, brother. This is fun. Appreciate you, yeah. Shane. Have a good yeah, one. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Take care. All right, right now. Yes, sir. You too.